Hi, my name is Ben Taylor, and this is the Vestma Networks Products Channel. Today we're going to be discussing the TC600. The Terrace TC600 is a multi-channel QAM to analog RF converter designed for indoor installation. The TC600 is deployed from a cable node to an MDU and acts as a gateway between the, between the cable operator's distribution network and the customer's premises. The TC600 demodulates and converts MPEG-2 transport streams from up to eight QAM carriers to RF signals. It can decode and remap up to 46 standard definition MPEG-2 transport streams per chassis, remodulate them to NTSC format analog video channels, and transmit them downstream to analog equipment. When equipped with cable cards, the TC600 can remove Proprietary Conditional Access Security, or CAS, used to encrypt MPEG-2 video programs and decrypt up to 36 program streams for chassis. The TC600 comes in two hardware configurations, the TC600 LF, or low frequency unit, and the TC600 HF, or high frequency unit. When used in double stack mode, the TC600s can decrypt up to 72 channels. When used in triple stack mode, the TC600s can decrypt up to 82 channels. The front of the TC600 contains the LEDs, which display the status of the unit. Beside these are the craft interface port, which allows you to serial into the unit, and the ethernet port, which allows you to supply IP services, such as an IP address to the unit. Additionally, the front of the unit allows us to replace the cable cards. To do this, simply unscrew the front panel, then click on the side of the cable card to push it out. There you go, you'll hear it pop. And with new cable card, you simply push it in until the button pops out again. And then screw the front panel back on as I'm doing right now. And just like that, we've added and removed a cable card. So on the back of the TC600, we have the four fan modules, as well as the power supply. We also have the RF output port and the RF input port. The TC600 comes with a power cord, as well as two rack mounting screws. Vesma Networks recommends that the customer purchase an ethernet cable, a coaxial cable for RF connection, as well as a USB A to B cable to serial into the unit. What are the putty settings needed to serial into the unit? To serial into the unit using PuTTY, click on Serial, then enter in the COM port that's associated with the unit, enter in a speed rate of 38400, data bits of 8, stop bits of 1, parity of none, and flow control of none. Then click Open, and you'll be brought to the textual user interface. To access the textual user interface, the user can either SSH into the unit using the IP address, or they can serial into the unit using the craft interface port. Once connected to the unit, the user will have to log in using the username and password provided by Vesma. This will bring you to the textual user interface. The textual user interface contains information which can be important when first provisioning the unit, such as access to the decryption page which shows cable card information. This also allows the user to set up a static IP address before the web GUI is accessible. Where do I download the SNMP MIB file? To download the SNMP MIB file, click on Configuration then SNMP.
This will bring you to the SNMP page where you can download the MIB file for the unit. Where do I submit a configuration file? To submit a configuration file, click on Configuration, then Submit Config File. This will bring you to the configuration page. Here you can simply choose a file and then click Submit to upload it. This page does not allow you to create a configuration file as that is done by a separate configuration tool. How do I set the unit into DHCP mode? To set the unit into DHCP mode, click on Configuration, then Set DHCP mode. This will take you to the Set DHCP mode page. This web page allows the user to set the method that the TC600 will use to acquire a network address to DHCP. The status of the current configuration is shown on the top of this page. To set DHCP mode, simply click on Submit. Where do I set the unit to a static IP address? To set the unit to a static IP address, click on Configuration, then Set Static Mode. On this page, it displays the current mode, which is DHCP, and allows the user to put in the static IP, the net mask, and gateway, then click Submit to set the unit to a static IP address. Where do I find the Vesma Cloud page? To find the Vesma Cloud page, click on Configuration, then Vesma Cloud. The Vesma Cloud page is intended for future use with those who implement the Vesma Cloud system. Where do I edit the static mappings? To edit the static mappings, click on Configuration, then Edit Static Mappings. On this page, you can add a new row, edit an existing row, or delete an existing row. Where do I administer the static mappings? To administer the static mappings, click on Configuration, then Admin Static Mappings. On this page we have the current mode, so the static mappings are currently disabled, as well as we have the actions. There are four actions which can be taken. You can apply, delete, enable or disable the static mappings from this page by clicking Submit. Where do I import the static mappings? To import the static mappings, click on Configuration, then Import Static Mappings. On this page, you will choose the static mapping file, then click Submit to import it. Where do I check the hardware status? To check the hardware status, click on System, then Hardware Status. This will bring you to the hardware status page. Here we have the temperatures for various different parts of the unit, as well as the fan status, which shows the fan presence, as well as the RPM that the fan is running at. Where do I find the version information? To find the version information, click on System, then Version Information. Here you'll find information about the system hardware, system software, the decryption resources, as well as the banner text if any is present, as well as the unit type. In this case, it's a low frequency unit. Where do I find information about the operating system status? To find information about the operating system status, click on System, then Operating System Stats. This will bring you statistics regarding the disk space, memory, load, CPU usage, as well as system uptime. Where do I find information about Im the embedded cable modem management? To find information about the ECMM, click on System, then ECMM Information. On this page, we have ECMM information such as the serial number, firmware version, hardware version, and uptime. We also have downstream status and upstream status. Where do I find information about test mode? 
To find information about test mode, click on System, then Test Mode Enable. This will take you to the Test Mode Enable page. Test mode is intended for a lab environment and is used to help set up and provision in such an environment. Test mode allows the TC600 to be configured without the presence of SI, a CMTS, and or DHCP server. On this page, we have the time remaining for this request, attempts remaining for this request, so this shows how much time remains before we, the unit will stop taking requests, and this shows how many times a request has been made. There's also the request link, the request itself, and the authorization string. When a request is made, you will need to put in the authorization string, then click submit, and this will enable test mode. Please keep in mind that all units that are in the field should not be in test mode. This is intended only for lab use. Where do I find information about the decryption status? To find information about the decryption status, click on Decryption, then Status. This will bring you to the Cable Card Status page. On this page, we have the card web route, the authorization. Both of these are links to other pages. There is also the status of the card itself, the copy pair status, the VCT slash hub ID, as well as additional general information. Where do I find the decryption identification? To find the decryption identification, click on Decryption, then Identification. This will bring you to the Cable Card Identification page. Here we have the MOKER for each card, the host ID for each card, the MAC address for each card, the card ID, the card serial number, the unit address, and the data ID. This page is critical when first provisioning the unit as it provides information about the cable cards which are used in provisioning. Where do I find information about the network interfaces? To find information about the network interfaces, click on Interfaces, then Network. This will bring you to the network page. On this page we have the interface, the state of each interface, whether the interface is enabled, the IPv4 address, the IPv6 address, the MAC address, the net mask, the broadcast address, the received bytes, the transmitted bytes, and the gateway. Where do I find information about the input qualms? To find information about the input qualms, click on Interfaces, then Input Qualms. This will bring you to the Tuner Input Statistics page. Here you'll show each qualm, the frequency of the qualm, the power, tuner lock status, AGC lock status, FEC status, MPEG status, qualm status, signal to noise ratio, BER, uncoded BER, the blocks, the corrected blocks, the uncorrected, and the corrected bits. Where do I find the out-of-band status? To find the out-of-band status, click on Interfaces, then Out-of-Band Stats. This will take you to the Out-of-Band Tuner Statistics page. Here you'll see the frequency of the out-of-band, the power level, tuner lock, AGC lock, qualm status, SNR, blocks, depth I, and depth J. Where do I find information about the output statistics? To find information about the output statistics, click on Interfaces, then Output Statistics. On this page, you'll see for each of the EIA channels, there is the decoder ID, the transport stream processing discontinuities, the primary audio PID bad frames, the secondary audio PID bad frames, the PAP resyncs, the SAP resyncs, the PAP no audio, the SAP no audio, the audio video sync errors, the audio video timeout errors, resets, macro block errors, MPEG errors, as well as 
no audio, which represents the number of times the audio program data did not arrive, and no audio 2, which is the number of times complete audio loss was detected. If you need to clear these statistics, please go down to the bottom of the page, choose Yes, and click Submit. Where do I find information about the output mappings? To find information about the output mappings, click on Interfaces, then Output Mappings. This will bring you to the Content Mappings page. Now here you'll have the output EAA of each of the channels, along with the source ID associated with that channel, the VCN number, the source name, the program number, the frequency, the QAM mode, the video PID, the primary audio PID, the secondary audio PID, the source, the state, whether or not the program is encrypted, which cable card decrypted it, and which LTS on the cable card decrypted it. Where do I find information about the out-of-band SI? To find information about the out-of-band SI, click on Interfaces, then Out-of-band SI. This will bring you to the out-of-band SI page. Here you will have the out-of-band EAS source ID, as well as the source ID, VCN number, source name, program number, frequency, QAM mode, application flag, and hidden flag for each of the programs. Where do I find information about the in-band SI? To find the in-band SI information, click on Interfaces, then In-band SI. This will take you to the in-band SI page. Here you'll have the source ID, VCN number, source name, program number, frequency, and QAM mode of each of the programs found on the in-band SI. Where do I find information about the current alarms? To find information about the current alarms, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to click on the alarm symbol up here, or I will click on Status, Current Alarms. This will bring me to the Current Active Alarms page. Here you will have a description of the alarm, as well as the time that it was raised. Where do I find information about the alarms history? To find information about the alarms history, click on Status, then Alarms History. This will take you to the Alarms History page. Here you'll have a description, state, time raised, and time cleared for all the alarms. Now this page will be cleared if the unit is rebooted. Where do I find the active log messages? To find the active log messages, click on Status, then Log Messages. This will bring you to the Log Messages page, which shows all the currently active log messages. If the unit is rebooted, most of these logs will be lost. Where do I find the persistent log information? To find the persistent log information, click on Status, then Log Persistent. This will bring you to the Persistent Log Messages page. These are the log messages that continue to exist after a reboot. To clear this section, you would click on Yes, then Submit. Otherwise, these logs will be retained between reboots. Where do I upgrade the unit? To upgrade the unit via SCP, click on Upgrade via SCP. This will take you to the Upgrades page. Here it will show you the current status, so it will show you the current version, the state, the details, the SCP server, the SCP username, the SCP file name, and the SCP complete. Here it will also allow you to put in the SCP settings, such as the server IP, file name and path, username and password. Click Submit to begin an upgrade. Where do I take a debug dump? To take a debug dump, I can go to one of two places. I can click on the bug symbol up here, or I can click on Debug Dump. To generate a new debug dump, choose New, then click Submit. The dump state will be here, and this will show as the dump gathers up various different logs. 
Here you'll show the last completed, and down here we'll have the download. Once a dump is ready, it will appear here to be available for download. Debug dumps contain critical troubleshooting information, which is of great use to Vesma networks, so please ensure to take a debug dump when you encounter an issue before rebooting the unit. Where do I reboot the unit? To reboot the unit, I can either click on the power symbol up here, or I can click on Reboot. Now when rebooting the unit, there are two options. The first is to reboot just the system itself, and the second option is to reboot the ECM and the system. Choose whichever option you wish, then click Submit to Reboot the Unit.